Hello everyone, my name is Roberto. I'm a research collaborator in applied mathematics at the University of Nottingham. It's a pleasure for me to present a poster for this workshop at Kaust. Thank you for watching this video and let's move into the presentation. In this poster, I'm going to present the basic idea of an algorithm which aims to numerically solve systems of partial differential equations using a segregated approach in order to exploit the efficient and robust open source computational frameworks that have been already developed by the scientific computing community. Good examples of such frameworks are OpenFOAM for finite volumes and Phoenix for finite elements, but there are many others out there. We all know that mathematical models keep evolving in time and get more and more sophisticated. Each new model could require ad hoc theoretical and numerical treatments. We know that writing a new solver from scratch is time expensive and prone to bugs and errors, if not even slowing down the research activity with the risk to spend more time on coding rather than focusing on modeling aspects. It would be useful to have a flexible procedure capable of exploiting dimensional frameworks in order to solve new system of partial differential equations that are not natively solved by the frameworks themselves. Since we don't want to be involved in the low-level aspect of numerical frameworks, our algorithm involves only high-level operations commonly provided by the frameworks to deal with the the most common differential operators appearing in the PDE models. For sake of simplicity, we do not consider nonlinear partial differential equations, but unlike monolithic approaches, the presented method can also merge the iterative steps to solve the nonlinear part of the partial differential equations with the iterative steps related to the segregated procedure. For those of you who are not familiar with the concept of segregated approaches, everything will be clear in a moment. The most natural class of algorithms that can be used for a segregated approach is the block adaptation of classical static iterative methods for linear system. They can be derived directly by the classical version of Jacobi, Gauss, Seidel and Sor, just with a slightly modification of their formulation. We can start by looking at the equation number one. So, we can see the block matrix assembled by the discretization of all the differential operators appearing in the model, where boundary conditions are embedded in a matrix coefficient or in the known term. Monolithic approach solves this system at once, so we basically forget about the sub-matrix st structure appearing in this matrix of matrices, and we consider this matrix as just a huge matrix of numerical coefficients. This approach requires ad hoc pre preconditioning techniques due to the heterogeneous pattern of the resulting matrix. But since matrix manipulation is always transparent to users, this method does not allow to treat easily new equations without deep changes on the framework's code. On the other side of monolithic approaches, we have segregated approaches, where each equation in the block is, sim is solved separately. The most natural class of algorithm that can be used for a segregated approach is the block adaptation of uh, classical iterative methods for linear system. They can be derived directly by a classical version of Jacobi, Gauss, Seidel and so on. After having seen the context, we can now introduce our method. For sake of simplicity, we consider the case of n equals 2. The first step consists in splitting the operator A as in the formula number 8. This step is common to all classical iterative methods. However, in our case, we are applying this kind of splitting to only a part of the wall matrix. The objective of splitting 8 is to obtain an approximation of the operator A, and this, and this approximation has to be easy to invert, analogous like to preconditioning. The second step in the model consists on applying a block, outside, a block Gaussian elimination to the equation number 9. So, using this factorization, we can get the identity number 10 which is used to set the iterative method at, uh, described in equation number 11 and 12. Equation 11 and 12 
can be rewritten in a form which is more suitable to be compared with classical block methods, as we can see in equation 13 and 14. And we can also notice that if the L operators is equal to zero, we recover the classical formulation of block gauss seidel for the, can, for the case n equals two. Here, the operator L aims to increase the convergence speed with, with respect to the classical block formulation. Furthermore, the operator L can also act as a stabilization term. We also introduced another version of the algorithm called S2PJ, where two operators instead of one are split, and that's also the reason why the number two appears in the name. This choice is motivated by the fact that the product of sparse matrices is not sparse in general. The double splittings help to preserve a sparsity pattern of the original matrices because the number of elements in the approximated operators are smaller than the number of elements in the original ones. In particular, for the Jacobi case, the approximation are just diagonal matrices. Hence, the sparsity pattern of L is inherited by the only matrix which is not approximated in the product. So, this is basically the main idea behind our method. We started uh, recently to study this method, but the preliminary results uh, seems to be promising. We have already proven the convergence for the case C equals to minus B transpose, which is interesting in many physical cases. However, the convergence rates and generalizations still need to time to be proven. So, this is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for your attention and bye bye!